So my friends, we have taken over the yogurt section of Safeway because today I want to talk about probiotics in your yogurt, specifically if there are any. We know that probiotics are supposed to be healthy. They colonize our gut and even our blood and other areas of our body. And a lot of people try to eat yogurt because they're told that yogurt has some really good probiotics in it. The truth is that there might not be as many probiotics in here as you think, and there might be zero, depending on how this product was pasteurized. Now, this gets down to the details of pasteurization. Um, we kind of have to talk about how milk and yogurt is created. Milk and yogurt uh, come from a cow, and of course there is lots of bacteria within that process. Even if you're getting a non-dairy alternative, it starts off with some sort of almond paste or some sort of yogurt paste. This then goes through pasteurization. Now there are different levels of pasteurization. You can have low level, you can have high level, but basically this liquid or this product is heated and then it is cooled and then it gets packaged and this kills off pathogens and bacteria. But also it can kill enzymes, which are healthy and uh, can also denature proteins. So what's interesting is that even if this product started with a whole bunch of healthy bacteria, you see that they say that they added lactobacillus and bifidobacteria, once it goes through that heating process, do the cultures remain? And unfortunately, for a lot of the products out there, they're selling you these as yogurt is healthy, but the truth is that they might not have those probiotics. So how can you tell if your yogurt has probiotics or not, and what should you actually look for on the label? Well, this is kind of where it gets tricky as well, because just because it says probiotics on the label does not mean they're active, and then number two, doesn't mean they actually survive your digestive tract. Um, you know, the human body hangs out at like 98 degrees, and our bodies have specific bacterial cultures that live inside of them. We have colonies of these bacteria, and we have prebiotics, such as fiber or pectin, that feed that bacteria. And depending on how our bodies function, we can eat all the probiotics we want, but that doesn't mean they're gonna stick around. So let's actually get down to what these labels mean. What you wanna look for is something that says live bacteria. And I was taking a look at some of these. Um, this happens to be a dairy-based alternative that is very sweet. You'll notice that yogurt is always like, has added sugar. Um, and the reason why is because yogurt with probiotics tastes really tart. It tastes acidic and it tastes bitter. And that is true probiotic yogurt. But of course they add a bunch of sugar to make it taste good and to keep you buying it. Um, so this one says live active cultures include uh, Staphylococcus, Lactobacillus, and Bifidobacterium. Staphylococcus, Staph, is actually, there are many different forms of Staph that can be helpful, helpful for your body. You find that in yogurt. So this one does say live. Um, I'm going to go to one that is not a non-dairy alternative. This is by Yoplait and you'll see that they say you know that they're organic and they're certified but when you look here it actually says it is grade A pasteurized. So this means that this was a pasteurized product and when you look here it says grade A milk, cane sugar, it does say yogurt cultures but that doesn't mean that they are alive. Again after that heating process did they actually survive? This is another one that I was looking at, um, Forager. This one actually says, where is it? Contains coconut and cashew. It actually says on this little label that it has live active cultures. Uh, again, lactobacillus, staphylococcus, and uh, bifidobacterium. Fun fact, bifidobacterium is actually connected to lactic acid um, for those who are interested. So lactic acid, even though it comes from the fermentation of lactose, and people think of that as a dairy product, it can be vegan as well. Um, if we look at some of these other ones, we have ultra filtered milk. I don't know what this means. It says it's lactose free. It says grade A pasteurized. So again, is this going to have those live cultures? It says it contains live and active cultures, but was that before or after the pasteurization process? Also, you might see something like this. These are these little chewy cereal bars and they kind of have this yogurt coating. I've seen parents, specifically those who want to help their children eat healthy, buy these thinking that they're a nice probiotic alternative. But the truth is that if this is shelf stable, meaning if it's surviving on the shelf until what, October of 2020, and that's just a guideline for the, um, for the expiration date, this is not going to have probiotics in it. This has been pasteurized and made to be shelf stable. So if you're buying something like this, it's not actually going to give you any sort of probiotic benefit. Um, if it does not survive without refrigeration, you can almost guarantee that in a yogurt form, it's not going to have those probiotic bacteria. Now, there are probiotics that do survive without refrigeration, and especially in the forms of kombucha or in sauerkraut or things, you might see some of that. But this, if it weren't for a YouTube video, I wouldn't get closer to this than I would a gigantic elephant seal in heat. So we're gonna put that back. 
Um, let me see if I can find a non-dairy alternative that's bad. Um, for me, as a vegan, I like to eat non-dairy alternatives. This one I was taking a look at. This one, they try to make it all pretty. It looks good. It says vegan, plant-based, you know, ethical, um, ethically sourced vegan. So automatically, you kind of think this is a good one. Uh, and it's also made internationally, so you would think. But it doesn't mean that it's actually got those live cultures. It does say on the back that it contains cultures. But again, we don't know if those are still alive or if these went through a pasteurization process. And you do have to keep in mind that the pasteurization for dairy versus non-dairy is a little bit different because the non-dairy is usually an almond or a coconut or a cashew base, whereas dairy is the milk, which is, I mean, you go to any one of your milk cartons, it is pasteurized. But these are the things you kind of want to look for. Um, you know, and, and that right there, just because it looks happy and it looks fair trade, doesn't mean that it's actually sticking out for you. So again, look for that tart ass taste. If it tastes bitter as hell, um, that's probably going to have better, uh, better cultures for you. The other thing you have to remember is that we don't know if these actually get through the body. Just because you ingest them doesn't mean that your body is culturing them. Again, if you don't have the prebiotics, the fiber and the pectin, your body can't let them live. Essentially think about the bacteria in your stomach living their life there. You're giving them a home, but if they don't like the furniture or if they don't like the carpeting, they're gonna get up and leave. And that's where the prebiotics come in. You have to make sure that those are taken care of. Um, one brand that I do not recommend because I don't like them uh, is Activia. But if you do look, they are actually certified and it says live cultures it says L and P live and active probiotics so again make sure that you're reading your labels turn to learn so that you can actually choose products that are good for you um, it does seem like more of the non-dairy options generally seem to know that their consumer does read those labels and so they list things a little bit more clearly than some of these other more ambiguous brands um, see this says Aussie culture I don't know is it different it's, if it's cultured in Australia I don't think so um, and again you see cane sugar honey gelatin um, just because it's kosher and organic doesn't mean that it's good for you. And just because it has active cultures doesn't mean that they survived that pasteurization process. So turn to learn. If you want more nutritional science videos, comment, let me know. There's a video right here for you. And I hope that you can make better yogurt choices for your gut health. Enjoy, and I'll see you in the next video. <laughs> Bye.